When I first heard about phone apps being used to identify real plants and animals, I was like, that's a Pokedex. That's literally exactly what happens in Pokemon. Growing up, I watched so much of the Pokemon TV series, and it was so cool to see that Ash had this device that he could use to identify any creature that he found out in the wild, learn about its habits, learn about what it's like. And then a few years ago, around the time when Pokemon Go came out, I was working as a science educator, and it was so cool to see my worlds colliding a little bit. Pokemon Go was becoming popular, people were being brought out into nature nature by gaming, and these apps that are used to identify species were also growing in popularity, bringing a Pokedex-like technology into nature and wildlife watching. These days, with AI continuously improving, there are lots of different species identification apps to choose from, so I decided to go ahead and test an array of them, do some research on which ones are thought to be the most accurate, and give my recommendations, specifically keeping in mind people who are new to nature watching, wildlife watching, and gamers who might enjoy a sort of gamified experience. But I also have a science background and value accuracy, so I'm also looking for apps that are created by expert scientists and that have been found to be very accurate in their identifications. So my favorite app right now is called Seek. It's a very good all-in-one identification app, so plants, animals, fungi, it will identify any of that. It's totally free with no advertisements. Owned by iNaturalist, which is a nonprofit created by UC Berkeley, California Academy of Sciences, and the National Geographic Society. What I really like about it is it's super duper quick, so you don't even have to take a photo. You can just point the camera at it and it'll identify it for you live on the spot, which is super good if you just want a quick ID. And it sort of gamifies the experience by giving you achievements and badges and things like that, so definitely Pokemon players will feel right at home with this kind of app. Basically like Pokemon Snap, you know, you just gotta get the right angles. Make sure it's in focus, in the center of the frame, and there we go. Wonderful. When I was a little kid, I would love to pretend that I was in Pokemon Snap. I'd go to like the zoo with my disposable camera and try to get the best picture I could of each animal. So my inner child is very happy right now. But because it is all in one, it's going to sacrifice some accuracy because it is sort of less honed in on what exactly you're looking at. If you point it at a bug on a flower, it doesn't know whether to identify the bug or the flower, for example. If you're gonna install one app that's like your go-to identification app, I recommend Seek. The parent app for Seek is called iNaturalist. And this is a really good app if you are looking to connect with a community of naturalists and maybe get some more experts' eyes on your identification. When you use iNaturalist, you can upload an image to sort of a social network almost, and people from the community can help validate those observations and let you know if the app got it correct or if they'd suggest a different ID, which is great if there's something that the app really couldn't identify to a specific level and you want real human eyes on it. This happened to me the other day when I found a turtle nesting in a park near me and the app would not be able to tell me what turtle it was other than that it was like a freshwater turtle. So I posted it to iNaturalist and another person in the community said that it was a red-eared slider which is an invasive species. And iNaturalist uses the same exact algorithm as Seek, but it is just a little bit slower because you do have to snap the photo and it asks you to input more information. By default, you are sharing your location. So I definitely think Seek is better if you value privacy. iNaturalist is sort of a crowdsourced data repository where scientists can go to actually get information on what species are being found in your area to conduct scientific research studies. It's like what the Pokedex is in the Pokemon games where you're actually helping the professor document all of the species in a region for science, for research. Another app that is sort of an all-in-one, not even just for living things, but for anything is the Google app. This is probably the most well-known app right now for identifying things because it's Google. Like you can literally use Google Lens to identify anything that 
you're looking at and get information about it. Now I think because it is Google and Google has such a massive image repository, that does make it likely that somewhere on Google is going to include the thing that you're looking at. So even if it's something rare, Google is probably going to have something as an answer. It has a lot of information to feed into that recognition algorithm. But there's also a lot of misinformation on Google, so you have to be careful about what it recommends as a result. But it can be a good one to have on hand. For all my flying type Pokemon trainers out there, I do want to recommend an app that's specifically for birds, which is called Merlin. It is owned by the Cornell Lab of Ornithology. My favorite thing about Merlin is the sound ID. It has a feature where you can record the sounds going on around you and it will pick out all of the bird sounds and identify them on the spot live while they're occurring. Again, it might not always be 100% accurate, but it's a really good way to get started at figuring out what it is that you're hearing and maybe what you want to look for if you want to see this bird. I've been very impressed with this sound ID and I think it's great as a way to identify without having to take a picture because phone cameras are really good, but especially for birds, since they're often going to be farther away, it's better to have another way to identify it besides just taking a picture. So in this app, you can do sound ID, but you can also select from some options about what's the color of the bird that you're seeing, what are the behaviors you're observing, what's the size, and that can help give you an idea of what you're seeing too, again, without having to take a picture. So I think Merlin is a really good app if you're interested in birds in particular. And then the companion app to Merlin is eBird, which almost is like the iNaturalist of Merlin, owned by the same organization, the crowdsource database for scientists to use and it collects information not only on what birds are being observed, but how many, are there any unusual sightings, any hot spots of birds in the area. So it can be really good for getting some more specific information on birds. eBird helps inform scientific publications and conservation decisions. eBird reminds me of sort of the Pokemon Go field researcher role that the player has where you're kind of going out and collecting information, not just on what Pokemon are out there, but you know, how many, are there hot spots, are there interesting variations, things like that. And for all my grass type trainers out there, plant identification is probably the most common in this category of app. I think it's because it's a good supplement to other hobbies like gardening. You wanna know what kind of plants are growing in your garden, what kind of weeds, things like that. First one I wanna mention is Picture This. Multiple studies have shown that Picture This is one of the most accurate plant apps right now, which is a shame because it is it's, it has a free version, but it really pushes a subscription on you. It's constantly popping up with buy our subscription and it's limiting the amount of identifications you can do, which is really annoying. I also couldn't find any information about any expert biologists being involved in this app's creation. It seems like it's just a very sophisticated AI company, which is great that it does such an accurate job at identifying plants, but it's not my personal favorite. PlantNet, on the other hand, is another very accurate plant identification app. PlantNet actually came from this huge collaboration between botanists and computer scientists in France. So it kind of has the best of both worlds of it being a really good AI and being created by experts in plants. Like iNaturalist, it does also have a citizen science focus where it is meant to be used for scientific research to help understand plants in the area and other naturalists can help validate the identification so you have that real human input as well. The app has you select specific parts of the plant that you're photographing to help it hone in on the correct ID. And a recent study showed it to be one of the most accurate plant ID apps, though it was not compared against picture this in that study. So those are my recommendations. Again, I think Seek is my number one, but I would definitely caution you not to trust any of these apps 100% because they are imperfect, especially for things like foraging. I would definitely not trust any of these apps to identify what plants are edible. You're much better off learning from experts and tried and true field guides that are created by expert organizations. But I just love these apps for the accessibility of it. It's definitely a lot easier to use than a field guide. So I highly, highly recommend trying out one of these real life Pokédex apps. More and more video games 
libraries these days are including a compendium or critterpedia of species, so I think this hobby would be a natural fit for gamers. So go out there and explore, discover some creatures, and subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more videos from me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.